One way we have of reversing the direction of a single phase motor is to use a rotary switch. This rotary switch has three positions, an off position, a forward position, and a reverse position. Rotary switches have a set of auxiliary contacts that are connected internally to each other. What we need to do is establish which of these contacts are connected in the forward position and which are connected in the reverse position. We will start with the forward position. We will do this using continuity tests. Set your multimeter to the ohm setting. For convenience, you can also turn on the continuity buzzer. Now, it is just a case of discovering which contacts have continuity and recording the results. There is continuity between points 2 and 3. Completing the tests with the rest of the contacts, we found that the following contacts were internally connected. The one pair of contacts that were connected in both the forward and reverse directions were points 9 and 10. Forward, 2 and 3, 5 and 8, 9 and 10. Reverse, 1 and 2, 7 and 8, 9 and 10. Now that we have mapped the three pairs of connections available to us in the forward and reverse switch positions, we need to draw our wiring schematic showing how we are going to connect the motor to make it run in the forward and reverse directions. Let's trace the path of current in both the forward and reverse directions. Firstly, in the forward direction. From live, current will flow through the rotary switch, the centrifugal switch, capacitor and start winding, and then through the other rotary switch to neutral. Current will also flow from live through the rotary switch and then through the run winding. In this case, current flows through the start and run windings in the same direction, from left to right in our diagram. Now, let's look at the reverse direction. From live, current will run through the red line, through the first switch, then through the start winding in the opposite direction to before, through the capacitor and centrifugal switch back to neutral. Current will also run from live through the switch and then through the run winding to neutral. In this case, current will flow in the opposite directions through the run and start windings. This will reverse the direction of the motor. Now, we need to map our rotary switch connections onto the schematic. The pair that was connected in the forward and reverse position was 9 and 10. So, we will use this pair for the common set of switches, point 9 and point 10. The pairs that were different, we will use for the uncommon switches. Let's use 2 and 3 for this first forward switch and 1 and 2 for this first reverse switch.
we will use 5 and 8 for the second forward switch. Seven and eight for the second reverse switch. Now that we have completed our schematic, we can use it to wire our motor to the reverse rotary switch. It is good practice as you work to highlight which connections you have made so that you can keep track of what you have done and what you still need to do. We will start by connecting contacts 2 and 9 of the rotary switch. Both of these will connect to live. Now, we will connect point 3 to the centrifugal switch in the terminal box. Work through unit 1 of this topic to see how the connections inside the terminal box were discovered. The connection between the centrifugal switch and the capacitor is already in place inside the terminal box. The connection between the capacitor and the start winding has already been made inside the terminal box. The next connection to make is between contacts 1 and 5 of the rotary switch. Now, we can connect the start winding and contact 5 in the rotary switch. After this, we need to connect the end of the run winding to contact 8 in the rotary switch and also connect contact 8 to neutral. We also need to connect the start of the run winding to contact 10 in the rotary switch. Contact 7 in the rotary switch must now be connected to contact 3.
Finally, we need to connect live to contact 2 and 9. Remember, the first thing we did was to bridge these two contacts so either can be used. We will use contact 2. We also need to make sure that the motor is correctly earthed. Before supplying power, you would always conduct a power off test by testing continuity. As normal, set your multimeter to the ohm or continuity setting. We will test between live and neutral in the off position. As we expect, there is no continuity. In the forward position, we do have continuity. Back in the off position, there is no continuity. But in the reverse position, we again get continuity as expected. Now, it is time for a power on test. With the rotary switch in the off position, connect the motor to the power supply. Let's test in the forward direction. We can see the motor rotates in a clockwise direction. Now let's test in the reverse direction. This time, the motor rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. <laughs> 